Hi everyone. Hi guys. Thanks for having me here. Um, before I start with the topic tokenization of stocks, bonds, and the future of digital assets, a simple question. Are you invested in crypto assets? Raise your hands. Yeah, nice, a lot. So the big question is, is this the next wave, the game changer? We will see. Before I start, some seconds. My name is Ed Prince, and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Here's the QR code. And next month, we have a global Bitcoin Pizza Day party. So it's an invitation for you all guys. Uh, free pizza, free drinks, free content, super networking party. And I have a special gift for you guys, a minus 15% uh, discount of the best financial event in Austria, organizing by the Venture Capital every year. It's one week in Tyrol, Kitzbühel, in the mountains. We see business angels, a different financial experts, crypto guys and so on, are w in one week there talking about the future of finance. It's perfect to connect, create and collaborate. Scan this QR code and take your ticket. Okay guys. The real-world asset tokenization, it's the new narrative uh, started, triggered in 2024. But is it really new? I have heard about tokenization of everything in 2016 and also in 2017 in the initial coin offering mania. So let's be clear, tokenization is not the same as legal clarity because an asset represented as a token doesn't mean it's legally valid ownership. Even in 2025, most jurisdictions still lack consistent regulations. In the US, we have seen two major regulation regulators, the SEC and the CFTC, are still fighting over control. And in Europe, while the market in crypto asset regulation and also the DLT pilot regime are promising, legal fragmentation remains. So without legal certainty, institution will stay cautious because the next wave of adoption will depend on one thing, compliant, legally recognized infrastructure. And what we have seen last year, this time is different. We have seen a lot of different developments and initiatives in the area of real world asset tokenization triggered by the introduction of the Bitcoin spot ETFs, leading by the big firms for example, BlackRock, the biggest investment firm in the world. We have seen BlackRock launched its first tokenized fund on the Ethereum network, the first smart contract network, layer one network. Instant on-chain settlement, fast transparency. We have also seen tokenized different collateral networks. BlackRock use it to instantly move tokenized money market fund shares, for example, to Barclays as collateral. So collateral settlement now takes seconds, not days. We have also seen another different initiatives. There are some examples from Franklin Templeton, the one of the first regulated on-chain US government funds on Stella. It was also last year or Goldman Sachs um, with the digital asset platform and Santander uh, with the first pilots for tokenized debt instruments and so on and so on. So we have seen the real world asset tokenization last year. But what is really new? BlackRock is pushing hard for the real world asset tokenization, the tokenization of stocks and bonds. 
And Larry Fink wants the SEC to green light it because the big question is, is this really about innovation or is it a strategic power grab? Institutions already have access to prime brokers, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, for example. Secure custody and efficient infrastructure. So far, the only ones really buying tokenized treasuries are crypto firms, native, crypto native firms, because they don't have access to traditional finance. So the big challenge, the SPV structure. Actually, tokenization works by wrapping assets inside a digital entity. A special purpose vehicle, SPV, and tokenizing that. So, but institutions don't trust SPVs the way they trust traditional custody. If anyone can solve this trust gap, it's BlackRock. Their brand, their regulatory cloud, and the infrastructure might be the bridge between the traditional finance and the tokenized finance. And, yes, tokenization offers clear benefits. 21-7 trading, transparency, faster settlement, but let it be real. This isn't about decentralization. What we are seeing is a re-centralization, just in a digital wrapper. BlackRock isn't building the decentralized future. Institutions are using tokenization to create new controlled access points, not to distribute power. And let's not forget, BlackRock already dominates the US stock and bond markets. Tokenization, tokenization just gives them new ways to expand their reach to tokenize what they already own and control. So here the real question, does tokenization democratize finance or just replace old gatekeepers with new ones? And the next question is, should everything be tokenized? Tokenizing real world assets sounds promising, but the reality is mixed. Not all assets actually benefit from being put on chain. Let's be honest. Real estate, physical commodities, these are heavily regulated, locally anchored, and not easily tokenized. A token is worthless if the real world asset is lost or disputed. Tokenizing legacy system without real digital transformation just adds more complexity. Putting a token on top doesn't equal innovation. Where tokenization truly adds value is with natively digital financial instruments like bonds, debt, and money markets funds, and in markets where friction is high, like collateral settlement, repurchase agreement markets, and foreign exchange transactions, for example. It's about creating 24-7 markets, real-time settlement, and programmable assets, not just about creating digital copies of our old systems. Tokenization makes sense, but only under the right conditions. It is really important to understand compliance must be embedded. Know your customer, anti-money laundering, reporting, and so on and so on. Custody, payments, and smart contracts must be meet the enterprise security standards. Also, the legal ownership must be recognized and enforceable. Not everything needs a token. Tokenize what's meant to be digital, not just what can be. And what the actual st state, some use cases that actually work, we have mentioned before the tokenized of the U.S. Treasury funds, for example, BlackRock and Franklin Templeton, 
We have also seen the private debt and money markets and the tokenized settlements leading by JP Morgan. And what's coming next? We will see digital bond issuance, on-chain fund management, for example, programmable net asset values, real-time investor onboarding, automated compliance, full transparency, and aud auditability for regulators and limited partners. And also programmable uh, cash and foreign exchange settlement. So, for example, instant foreign exchange swaps um, in real time uh, for cash management combined with stable coins, tokenized bank money, also the CBDC, and complete the delivery versus payment flow. It's not about tokenizing everything, it's about finding real product market fit where blockchain makes the most sense. And the next layer, what happens after everything is tokenized? We will see programmable assets. We will see AI agents can interact with smart contracts. Autonomously, tokenized stocks and bonds become intelligent financial primitives. So for example, AI agents managing tokenized bonds portfolios, automated treasury operations, and also on-chain governance powered by predictive models. So this isn't just putting assets on chain, it's about making them smarter, faster, and autonomous. So the future isn't digital, it's intelligent and tokenized. This is my own project, it's a multi-agent system for your pocket. It's the Bloomberg terminal for crypto assets, so it's really uh, a nice a uh, assistant for you if you are a retail investor in the crypto asset world. If you like to try it, uh, here's the Telegram channel with our bot and the smartphone application will provide in the next few weeks. Thank you so much for your attention and maybe we have some time for questions. <laughs>